All right. So our topic today um, is going to be harm reduction, a harm reduction approach versus abstinence. Um, and the way that I have used that in my practice and kind of um, the approach that we look at that with is usually in terms of substance use or substance abuse. Um, but it really can be uh, used in, in terms of mental health recovery, um, any symptom recovery. But basically what it's just saying is abstinence would be completely, you know, no symptoms, no using, no, no bad stuff. Um, and then harm reduction is pretty simply what it sounds like, harm reduction, reducing the harm. So it's not holding somebody to a specific standard that may seem unreasonable or impossible for them. Um, it's just saying, let's reduce the harm, and that's progress. Um, and that's that's kind of the frame that we're looking at today. What does that make you? So we've actually got, yeah, we've got something similar in the church. We have a church word for it uh, called sin. Um, the the word sin is is a thing that God gives us to sort of encapsulate that which is, well, destructive, that which breaks stuff. Sin breaks stuff. And, and so when we deal with this word, uh, our, our Lord sort of tells us uh, both don't do it, but also love your neighbor. Uh, and when we deal with this in practice, uh, because in theory, it, it's a very simple thing. Sin bad, it breaks stuff, don't do it. Uh, it's, again, sort of the practice in the same light uh, of, of harm reduction that when we actually deal with loving our neighbor, uh, we have to acknowledge the fact that sin is addictive. Uh, all of us have our, our pet sins, uh, the, the sins that we go back to week after week after week, and, and we can't quite shake no matter how hard we try. Um, it, it's the reality that um, sin still breaks stuff in action, but as well as in thought, as, as uh, well as in word. And, and so if we were to grab, for example, uh, you grabbed substance abuse. I'm going to, I'm going to grab murder, uh, because <laughs> why, why not keep it dark? Um, it, it, it is obviously the most harmful to take a human life. Um, but your words, uh, can hurt, uh, the, the nursery rhyme that, that your parents taught you sticks and stones can break your bones. Uh, but words can never hurt you is, is a lie. Uh, in fact, it's, it's so obviously a lie that you had to come up with a nursery rhyme to try and convince yourself that your feelings weren't hurt because words do have power. God made things with words. And so they can be used to build up or to break stuff. And even thoughts, uh, if you walk around full of hatred all day, you're right. It might not do as much harm as if you shot somebody, but it still does harm to your relationships. It does harm to yourself. Sin breaks stuff. And so when we talk about, you know, how to manage that, uh, I've heard sort of, uh, when it comes to substance abuse, talking about sort of like higher functioning alcoholics, um, would that sort of be along the lines of, of harm, uh, our maintenance? Yeah, absolutely. I think that really the the purpose of it is to say, you know, if somebody's goal is abstinence, right? If somebody's goal is to completely stop using substances, stop using alcohol, whatever that is for them, um, that's obviously a great goal. They they can recognize, hey, even though I'm I'm being able to function, I'm being able to get whatever done, I'm re I'm recognizing that it's still impacting my life and it's impacting those around me, um, and really the, the harm reduction approach is in that, in that realm, if you're drinking a liter of alcohol a day, it's going to be really hard for you to all of a sudden stop, right? Just, just cold turkey say, nope, I'm actually not going to drink anymore, right? Because if it was that easy and that simple, um, I, I wouldn't have a lot to do. Um, you know, there, there wouldn't be this whole stigma around substance use and addiction and stopping, right? Um, and, I'm, I mean, I would probably have a book and not a job, too, because, well, there wouldn't be the need to continually forgive sins Absolutely. over and over again. And, and I think that a lot of people, you know, especially if it's been in their family, if they've been drinking or using substances for a really long time, um, it's it's really not, it, it's, that's where we're getting into the whole issue is that it's not like a moral failing that you're a bad person because you can't stop using drugs. Right. It's a lot more complicated than that. And so having this impossible standard going from drinking a liter of alcohol a day to just not ever drinking ever again, it is a pretty un unreasonable 
standard to expect from yourself or to expect from other people. And so harm reduction is about meeting people where they're at and literally reducing the harm, right? If you take one less drink today than you did yesterday, that's harm reduction. Um, And that seems a lot more approachable and a lot more reasonable for people to actually make progress with. And that's how people continue making progress. If you set this huge high goal and the standard that you're never going to reach, you're not going to be probably very motivated to continue trying to reach it. But if every day or every couple weeks or whatever that looks like for you, it gets a little bit better and you make progress, that seems a lot more attainable and, and probably encouraging to continue working on whatever it is you're working on. So we're not saying that in in one case, you should absolutely lean into that which is doing harm. In fact, if it's called harm reduction, we're trying to reduce the stuff that gets broken. We're reducing the sin. The question is sort of, again, what lets you look at yourself in the mirror? Uh, in you kind of touched on this in, in your realm, uh, that, that things are okay. For us, we have a word for this. It's justification. And, and we have a source for this. It's not you. It's Jesus. Uh, it's Jesus dying on the cross to remove from you all of your sins. Your justification before God is not about you not being dependent on something. It's not about you avoiding sin. It's not about you abstaining and making good choices. Your justification before God is dependent only on Christ our Lord. And if you are righteous before him, it lets you look at these things as if it's not so much uh, an all or nothing game because you already have all in Christ. Instead, we get to see what's a practical way to break less stuff for the good of my neighbor. Uh, we're not saying sin that grace may abound. What we are saying, though, is if sin breaks stuff, how can we get away from sin? Uh, before God, Christ took it away. But before each other, we can recognize that I am a baptized uh saint in Christ. I am a holy one before God, but I can still do harm to you and make your day way worse. And wouldn't it be great if I could do less harm? Is that, yeah, is that kind of getting after it? Um, I think, I mean, that's the goal, right? Is like you said, do less harm, a harm reduction. Um, and I think really the big thing about that is recognizing it's not, it's not necessarily a linear path right? Um, Not every day that you start to work on a substance use or mental health issue is every day going to be better, right? There's, there are going to be some days where abstinence seems easy, where it seems easy to abstain and stay on track and do whatever you need to do. Um, And there are other days where it's going to be really, really, really hard. Um, And every single thing that you do is going to be difficult and is going to be such a conscious effort to, like you said, do less harm. Um, and and I think that's really the biggest thing that one of the biggest things that I hope kind of people can take away from this is saying it isn't linear. It's not a straight line. It's it's not one day you start and then every day after that is going to be better because that's not realistic. Life is messy and humans are messy and humans interacting with other humans are messy. Um, and so that's just the nature of of progress um, and recognizing that if there's a day, like you said, that you can do less harm, that that's progress. And that feels encouraging, I think, to people that feel like it's, it's all or nothing. Right. But this is a question of living under the law or living in the gospel. Uh, your, your progress towards uh, Christianity is not, I gave my life to Jesus and every day I'm going to be a little bit less of a sinner until I don't need Jesus anymore, even though I say my whole life is dependent on Jesus that I don't need because I'm not a sinner anymore. Your life is not getting better before the Lord. It's, it's a daily dying and rising. Uh, it's living inside of your baptism where every single day, old Adam has to be drowned all over again, which means there's no linear path towards glory. It's, it's dying and rising daily. Uh, and that, that also the new man would emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. Uh, that every single day we would strive towards a, 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 a objective good, a love of God and a love of neighbor that has been laid out uh, for us, not for us to, to say now that we have achieved this and climbed this mountain, we can say that we are good, but so that we can say we who have been baptized, we who are washed, we who are united with Christ, we're already holy, but living this life, I uh, use the word messy, uh, I'll use the word sinful, but we're using them synonymously, aren't we? Uh, that, that um, yeah, if I live in this world, it's going to 
it's going to do damage to me. And if I live in this world, my own flesh is going to do damage to myself and others. And if I live around other sinners, they're going to do damage to me. And, and sin breaks stuff. And so it's not just sort of uh, the, the arbitrary minus one Jesus point because you thought something you shouldn't have thought, uh, but but your anger that that is is taken out on somebody else, your your uh, substance abuse that, that uh, you are trying to cope with internally splashes out and, and affects the people around you in your life and destroys relationships, which in turn begets uh, more and more destruction in all of it. We, we have to find our shelter in Christ if we're actually going to talk about uh, righteousness, if we're actually going to talk about holiness, if we're actually going to talk about worth and, and uh, value and being loved. But that means that if you are already holy in Christ, uh, again, we want to look at each other and start to say, now, what will make your life better? What will, what will help you? And God's law is a good thing for this. It does shape this. Uh, it, it's just that we should never try and measure our, our accomplishments by it. We, 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 we recognize then that, yes, our, our end goal is to be free from sin. It is to abstain from sin. But how we get there uh, is sort of, I, I think, the, the process. Um, for, for us in, in the church, it is, again, a daily dying and rising. But that means that as we go before the Lord, it, it's not saying... Now that I've completely given up on this thing, because now I just didn't realize that was a good idea. But now that you've told me it's a good idea, I'll never have this problem again. Uh, it, instead, it, it's a recognizing your good as, as true. How can we get there? Yeah, I think just like you were talking about with our, our goal is to to not sin, right? To not be sinful, to, to move towards that. And I think recognizing, is that a realistic goal, right? Am I ever going to get to the point where, oh, Okay, I'm free of sin. I'm good. I'm good to go, right? It's the same with any kind of recovery, right? Mental health or substance use recovery um, is that I always tell my clients there's no finish line, right? There's no point. You, 50 years sober, that doesn't mean you're, you're out of the woods, right? There's still something that you have to address and acknowledge and, and work on. And some days, again, it's going to be easier than, than other days. Um, and I think that for some people that can feel stressful and can feel like, oh, well, what do you mean there's no finish line? Um, and I think for others, and what I encourage people to, to kind of perceive it as is the, almost freeing, right? There isn't a finish line. There isn't a point that I have to get to that I like, I win, I win my, my depression, right? I, I beat addiction that that's not what it is, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but I think that again, that can even be empowering to recognize there's no final, there's no final point that I'm supposed to get to. And so I can just do what I can do every day. I think that this is a gift. Uh, our, our confessions, our, our, our scriptures tell us that as long as we have this flesh, uh, we will struggle with sin. There is a, there is a you, you have conquered sin ultimately thing. It's called the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. It, it's the last day. And so um, it, until we actually reach that, we get to say, I am free in Christ. I am free in Christ not to be bound by the law and measuring how well I'm doing. I am free in Christ to start to say, I have already been named holy. So as I struggle in this world, I struggle not trying to earn anything, but, but simply trying to, to uh, love my neighbor in this world that has been so wrecked by sin, mine and, and other people's. But, but in all of it, uh, it, it's a gift because it doesn't rest on you. It, it rests on Jesus. And so we can take each day to try and work small practical things uh, that, that help us uh, along the way. Uh, the, the idea that we would have less damage done by sin in this world should be a good thing to anyone, I would think. Absolutely. And I think one of the things that, you know, leads people to feel like the only option is abstinence is guilt. And talking about how I, you know, I feel guilty for, for having any sin, for having any, any symptoms, right, for having any um, use, and that feels like it needs to be, well, my only option is abstinence, right, to abstain from anything bad. Right. After all, Jesus said, go forth and, and sin no more. And we all know that if that lady messed up, she would go straight to hell and the cross didn't matter. Um, we we kind of actually need to recognize that two things can be true at the same time. Uh, that, that God does say, go forth and sin no more. Sin is bad. Uh, you are called to abstain from sin. But your your righteousness doesn't depend on that. Your, your righteousness depends on Christ. And, and so at the same time, uh, as we, we stand before each other, uh, again, uh, before God, yes, all sins are bad, all sins are damnable, all sins are equal in, in that sense that they are 
they, they, they bring condemnation. But all sins are also equal in the fact that Jesus died for all of them. And so then before each other, uh, we, we get to say some sins do more harm than others. Uh, we, we really ought to try and order our days in, in a way then, uh, that, that can actually say, uh, my guilt has been taken away by Jesus. My, my vocation, my calling, my, my places to, to serve in this life, they are shaped here by, by what I've been given to do and who I've been given to do it for. So I want to be the best dad. I want to be the best student. I want to be the best kid. Uh, and, and so in all of it, we're given ways to pursue that that are free from guilt because Christ has taken your guilt away.